Happy Monday. Happy, happy, happy Monday. Monday. Happy week. This today is a great day. We've got a fun show. We've got a Yay. lot of stuff going on in this show. Got a Bible quiz later on coming up. So yeah, we're bringing it back. That. That's uh -oh. going to be fun. Yeah, bringing it Pastor back. Has no <laughs> idea. Pastor has no idea what it is, so he's going to be put on the spot as well. All right, we wanted to open up today. We're with, still under construction. Yeah, we're still under construction, of course. I don't know if you got to see that on the wide shot on the opening. But within the next two weeks, we should have the whole studio done. We'll take you on the big grand tour, a little behind the scenes and all those things. So stay tuned for that. But bear with us for at least another week or two. You know, to them, it does probably look like we're in the same place. It, I'm sure it does, but it they isn't. They just can't see what we see. Anyway. Oh, if you could see all the stuff that Bring we... Bring your uh, hard hat front now. My this goodness. Look, they just zoomed out. We are different areas. We are different, see, and it's going to change again. Area, oh, great news. Our furniture is being delivered this week. So our set furniture is here, or it will be here, and then I can finish doing everything, and then we have to do the Christian Fitness yes, set. All this other stuff so. you see, we've been borrowing from other sets, <laughs> and you've been kind of piecemealing it together. So anyway, we're getting there. All right, today, we want to start with a little fun. I Since love we're live this. live on Monday. Hopefully, you're watching us live. I our love this. church sign. Can't sleep. Try counting your blessings. Ooh, that is that absolutely, I think, fantastic. I feel like church signs went away for a while. They did. <laughs> we brought them back. We're bringing them yeah, back. Yeah, we brought them back. But I, I love this. Maybe churches stopped doing signs. Or you yeah. ran out of slogans. The whole COVID <laughs> lockdowns are now they're back. <laughs> I love I mean, this because this reminds me of you, Pastor James, when you're, when, you know, he'll say, if somebody's going through something, make a list. Make a list of everything God's done for you, all yeah. the things. Make that list and keep that. You know what? You should every day, I have a little brag, God brag book, and I write things in it. Every day you should be looking for something great that God's done, whatever it is. Write it down because it's easy to forget this, but that make a list, mm -hmm. ooh. Powerful. That's part of that. Well, they count say if blessings. you can't sleep, count sheep. That's why yeah, I thought this was really I don't clever. Do that. Forget I counting pray. sheep, count your blessings. And there you go, much better than counting sheep. All right. I think that's fine. I don't know where you live in the country, but hopefully you're a little bit further north than we are because we really don't have seasons in Florida. You have summer and then you have a couple cold days and then you have summer again. But <laughs> the rest of the country actually gets to enjoy the changes of the leaves. And we have some of the favorite spots oh, from, man, from around the country. When I was in New England last week, yeah, and Connecticut I took a has some beautiful some ones. More. But here you go to some of the top fall destinations for foliage. Shenandoah National Park in Virginia. Look at that. Oh my gosh, what a drive that would be. That's beautiful. That's stunning. Okay, that just took me there. Uh, no. Nope. Yellowstone oh. National Park. Oh, a Christmas Idaho. tree. Well, sorry. I get a little excited about Christmas trees. Just beautiful. So see, this, these are some of the places around the country that if you're close by, go visit. Our next one. Green Mountains, I was about Vermont. To say, this this ain't a good list in New England. Honestly, this is Vermont. Oh, New that England. Make sense. Yeah, yeah the that's too. beautiful. Love it. Stephen found these, so good job, Stephen. And then, of course, the Adirondacks, Adirondacks in New York. Just that's beautiful. just beautiful. stunning. And then next, we have where you live in the country. This is for today, October seventeenth. What the foliage is around the country? How do you See, know it's already brown. Is? The peak would be your colors: your oranges and your reds and your your. Uh, whatever color that is, magenta. You can see the browns, they're starting to die. Of course, green, we really don't have a season. That's October 17th. Next week, look how it's starting to move further south. So you see more brown up north. So are north. you saying peak is the center now? Correct. Yep. So all this is dead. Exactly. Yep. Because oh, it's so it's almost it past yeah, peak. Yeah, you're almost yeah. done. You better, yeah. go, you better go visit wow. some of these places now. So here you go. This is the website this that we pulled amazing. this from. Look how cool this is. There's the 17th, the 24th, 31st. Wait, Florida 7th. gets hit? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, we get hit? Yeah. Here we go, hold up. Okay, September 12th, 19th, yard, 26th. It totally falls. Look at it, cycle off. down. The 3rd, the 10th, today, That's next week, a week that after. Isn't that beautiful? cool? Beautiful. I is think that is absolutely Roll that amazing. Keep, let that keep rolling, Stephen. I love this. So yeah, now, September 12th, 19th. Here we come. Seasons start to change, October 3rd. So really, October is the month. Yeah, yes. beginning of October. October is the month. And then look how quick it is, one month. I love this fall. Is, I do, too. Isn't this fascinating, That's one sad thing about being here. I think. I miss it. Well, but then you get the sunsets. I miss it. No, I know. I mean, I'm not, obviously, I want to be here. I'm just saying. <laughs> Please I'm, don't I'm, go anywhere. I miss fall. <laughs> yeah. The colors, the changes, the leaves. But then yeah, uh, somebody on TikTok last week was from Minnesota, and he goes, I just want to tell you something. It was pouring snow on him. And he goes, oh. if you ever even think about moving to Minnesota, Don't we skipped it. fall. <laughs> we went from summer to winter, and it's pounding on his oh, face yeah. at the end of September. Oh. I was like, oh, oh yeah, gosh. that I could not do well with. Okay, All right, our national we have days. another segment that I'm not sure how I feel about. 
It's National Color Day. I just don't know how I feel about it because I don't. It's National Color Day this Saturday. Yeah, yeah, and Which I means just what? It's it's a little different. Just celebrate the different colors. Celebrate That's why we did all the colors. fall, the beautiful okay. leaves. We're so, clearly bored. Yeah, so here, yeah exactly. Just, so here you go. Ran out of days. Here's the psychology See, of, of color. color. That's why I said I'm not sure how I colors? feel about this. Yeah, a lot like of people. Crayons? Can, yeah. No, any color. A lot of people claim that colors emit emotions, and here's what they claim on some of them. But that's, I mean, there are people, there are corporations that will design their logos around colors. They'll you know design that's their the store flow around color. Emotions. Yes. These are all. You know, let me the, say this. It's funny you're saying that. My wife the other day was showing us she's looking early for Christmas for the mm -hmm. kids right and she was showing us like do you want to buy this for the kids do you want to buy that for the kids and I noticed the vibrant colors on all the packaging mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and when she stopped showing me the am you know it's high screen LED right. then I'm driving and I said to her I said I wish life was as colorful as those toys because this yes. is bl life's bland <laughs> But these pe no, you know what I mean? Like the colors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get but it. you look at these kids' toys. Oh, everything's and it's like vibrant. Boom, boom, and you're like, how come life don't have boom, boom? Yeah. But all the kids is like the most amazing, vibrant colors matter. Yes. Oh, they and really I think that's do. how they get our kids. There you well, go. Well, I, I think that, and and it stimulates your appetite, all kinds well, of. Well, here, things. what so color got you on, on the kids' toys? Because we'll, yeah, we'll look at it versus our psychology color? of color here. So they're saying that. Excitement is red and love yeah. and strength. Well, sure, and red, then, rose, is love. Primary colors? Yes. Yeah, pretty like much. So blue, red, green. green, yes. So um, green means, that it's supposed to mean it's supposed good to be taste, relaxing. relaxing. I don't know about the envy thing. We don't have that as a child of God. Um, sophistication and sincerity, purple. Corporate high quality and serenity, blue. Now, if you think about serenity, like the sky, the sky is so peaceful. So yeah, maybe. Um, happiness, I think of yellow, I think of yellow roses. I think of our son on the Love Living Life logo. He is oh, yellow, yellow. Yeah. And happy. Or the guy <laughs> over there on the Christian <laughs> Fitness Kids set oh, well. with the, the yeah. little. And then white as happiness and purity. Yeah, I mean, I, I love white. Actually, I think we're doing a special ladies thing and we're all going to wear white because that just made me happy. You know, when we moved here, I was shocked how many people wore color. Like yeah. just because you're yeah. in the sun, yeah. mm -hmm. or if you go in the Northeast or New York City, it's People all black. black. Everywhere's dark. Well, we've been kind of disappointed at our crew here. Everybody has dark clothes on. <laughs> I have black on I was just on hoping today. we could get some color in the room. Oh well, colors hey, are fun. This last weekend, we want to focus on our CTN Spotlight. What CTN's been doing around the country, around the community. Um, big event last Saturday, I guess it was. Um, Hero to was a, a part child. of it. Yeah, Hero to a Child. It was a 5K run, and then, of course, they had their shorter runs and things like that. But just an amazing, amazing organization. Um, you want to explain a little bit about it, and then we'll sh I'm show gonna the I'm going to read what they say because I think they say it better than how I could just say it. That they wrote on their press release that this event, it raises community awareness and support to the children in Pinellas and Pasco County. So this is basically the Tampa Bay. So this is part of what CTN locally has been involved in. Who have, and this is for an awareness for children who have been removed from their homes by no fault of their own, um, it's either been from, you know, they've been removed from some kind of catastrophic event in their household. So that's what this is about. And it's about mentoring kids and giving kids um, their needs, taking care of things that, whether it's housing or whatever it is, and having a superhero in their life to help mentor them. So that's what this is about. And I think it's beautiful. So well, it's not just, yeah, in so all that. In the whole superhero theme, the you event. dress in a theme for this 5K. This was, you don't just show up and you're running short, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I'll let them explain it, but watch this. It's fine.
So that was that Hero was awesome. to that a Child. Cool. I thought that was amazing. Stephen did a great job. He's our producer, but he uh, went out and shot that and yes. edited that. So great so job, good. Stephen. Yeah, really nicely great done. Great cause, right? So it was a great cause. I mean, they're raising awareness for kids that need help and raising funds. And these people that were running are from everywhere. Our GM from here was um, in the race. He was a guy in the green that was waving and kind of went, oh, I made it with his wife. Um, so I, I think it's a great organization. I mean, and it gives hope to kids. So, and that's what it's all about. That's what counts. Yeah, so that's great news. And we also have another good news story for you. Because there's enough bad news in the world, we want to hit you with some good news. So <laughs> listen to this. Pastor, you're going to appreciate this. <laughs> they just recently had this event. It's called the Great Recital. Mm -hmm. And you it's a five-day event. Go to their website, but we're yes. going to show you a quick clip in a second. But it's, a, it's called the Great Recital. Five-day event. They recite the entire New Testament from memory. <laughs> no so way. they cycle yes. through different people with different thing? books, the, the entire, entire New, Testament New Testament for memory. It's I have trouble amazing. memorizing one verse, so I'm very <laughs> impressed with these people. Wait, not one person. No, no, no. no they cycle different through people. different oh, people. I was about yeah. to say, that's not Yeah, normal. but still, no, I mean, still, people. you can do oh, one book. Oh, it's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I mean, the great recital. Here's a quick clip for you. They had Peter and John brought in and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit, said, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. That's awesome. What what version are they reciting? I don't know, but 260 chapters, 8,000 verses, 180,000 words. That's amazing. All for memory. And That's he incredible. was he was actually quoting from the Book of Acts, which the cornerstone. Oh my yeah, gosh, that, good that stuff? was amazing. So yeah, kind of cool. That's, That's cool. Really good. I thought mean, that so cool. I mean, so go online. Yeah, you can watch part of it. That's where we pulled it from. Uh, but go online and check that out. So that's our good news story for as today. Long, as often as the gospel can go out and that just continues to proclaim Jesus, I think that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, we as have many places that, as possible, as, everywhere you can do it. Yeah, we have several friends that would memorize entire books of the New Testament. I don't know. <laughs> I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday, so I struggle with and a little bit. <laughs> for, like, as a young person, re remembering scripture is so important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. It'll come back in your yeah. life. Absolutely. Yep. You know, like my kids, they're always having a memory verse every week, and, and it's amazing. Mm -hmm. I think that's awesome. Because they're like studying and just quoting. It's just awesome. Yeah, I snuck like, into kids' church yesterday, and they were working on a memory verse. So cool. Really, really nice. All right, Lori, what do you have for us? Since okay. we are in our, our kitchen here, our Love um, Living Life kitchen. Well, one of the national days this week is National Nut Day. So, <laughs> you know, I didn't want to make peanut butter and all that other like stuff. Like specific or, nuts? Just, or just nuts. Just variety. nuts. It's any variety. So what I thought I'd do is do a really quick little synopsis of what are the best nuts that are the healthiest. And almonds are really probably the healthiest. And so here's a fact on nuts, on almonds. They're full of protein but you have to eat them in moderation. I'm, you know, I think the what? key with really? nuts, yes, Stop. here's the key with nuts. <laughs> nuts are very high in fat, and but they're so good for you. They're so full of protein. So the key is, if you're hungry, have a glass of water, and then take a small handful of nuts and then close the bag. If you're trying to lose weight, if you're not, then just go I'm at it. Because is over, uh, overweight because they eat too many nuts. Oh gosh, no! You can actually Stop. gain weight by eating lots of nuts every well, day. Well, you think about it. Well, if, you're, if you're vegan or something like that, where are you going to get your proteins? So a lot right. of them will get their. They're not going to eat meat Gorilla or fish or chicken. Gorilla gets it from so. lettuce. <laughs> yeah, but that's not protein. So here, let me give you a couple of facts. An ounce of nuts, which is about 24 almonds, is 165 calories, 6 grams of protein, 14 grams of fat. So let's say you do that three times a day every day. That's a lot of extra calories. You have to remember that you're accumulating your calories. So that's a cum. You accumulate whatever nuts you eat, whatever this you eat, whatever that, 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 that. And by the time you do all that in one day and you take a diary of what you've eaten, you have now added so many calories and so many fat grams that's why you can't lose weight. So that's, nuts are important. They're full of 
all kinds of nutrients. Yes. Just don't overdo it. And so. healthy fats. And I mean, when I'm hungry, I'll take a little tiny handful of them and I'll eat them really slowly. And, and the reason why almonds work is because they're very dense. They're nutrient dense. You have to chew them. You can't just... They're also calorie dense, and that's the only yes. warning, is right. they're one of the most calorie dense yes. foods that there is. So, yeah, just eat just moderation. or any nut? Most nuts. Most nuts. Most nuts are the I same. I mean, you know, they're, they're, but they're great for you. So the top ones are almonds, cashews, walnuts, peanuts. What about macadamia? And macadamia. Pistachios. Those are the five. Oh, and pistachios. That's right. I'm sorry. Macadamia is under there somewhere. And pistachios? Are, yeah, they're very really good, good for, for you. you. Very good are, for you. What if... How about like the ones you have to crack the real big shell? That's walnut? a walnut. That's that, one of the best because it's yeah, easier you on your teeth. Yeah, you got to work so hard to get exactly. in. Exactly. You, you burn calories just trying to get inside the thing. <laughs> but that's one of Dad's the... like, you want some nuts that are healthy? Yeah, that's one of the healthiest nuts. <laughs> and they're easier on your teeth. Almonds are the hardest nuts on your teeth because they're so hard. That's why you need a nutcracker so, at Christmas. Right. Put them but, inside his mouth. I mean, if you eat a walnut, Pull notice that. how it's all about really Yeah, the yeah. nutcracker. You put a walnut in there. Yeah, it's a real nut. Oh, I couldn't know that. That's why his jaw, you know, put his... We're going to have to get one. Awesome. Coming up for Christmas, yeah. we'll we'll do some nut crack. I didn't know about nut nuts. Cracking. That's fascinating. There yeah. you go. They're great. Hey, so. speaking of nuts, here we go. Is that really in the Bible? Uh oh, it's our Bible quiz for today. I'm gonna go to my touch screen back here. We have six nuts for you: almond, cashew, chestnut, pecan, pistachio, and walnut. Oh boy. Are, of course, <laughs> some of these are in the Bible. Which ones are? Which ones are not? We're starting with number one: the almond that Lori is so fond of. Absolutely. True. Almonds in or not? Absolutely. Thumbs up? Absolutely. I'm, I'm getting a lot of thumbs up. Answer yes. Nine. Yeah. Now, this is New King James only, so don't look in your oh, Amplified right, and tell right, me it's right, different. Right. I'm it's going by New King it. James only, otherwise we'll be here all day. But yes, almonds are mentioned nine times. How about cashew? Ooh, I'm going to say no. I get it. I get it. Yeah, trendy. kind of mixed. Too trendy. California And walk. my touch screen? Nope. No there. cashew. No, it's too trendy. <laughs> It's too California. I gotta tell you, I love cashews though. No, you oh, don't. I, yeah, yeah, cashews are one of my cashew favorites. Look like? it it's like kind of curved a little, curved a little bit. Oh, it's like a little smiley butter? face. Oh yeah, he absolutely. Has. All right, we chestnut. Are chestnuts roasting on an open yeah, fire in the Bible? It's old. Oh, I'm getting a lot. Of, yep, getting a lot of thumbs up here. Yeah, and chestnuts, it. two times in New King James. Yes, yeah. Pastor's batting a thousand. All right, up to pecan. Oh, I do man. love pecans. Ooh. Pecans are good for you. They grow some great pecans in yeah, Georgia. Yeah, southern Georgia. people in Georgia. I'm going to say it's in the Bible. That's where they got it from. Pecans? Oh! No! It's nowhere in the Bible? Pecans are not in the Bible. Not in the New King James. If you look up, you know, not in the New King. some other... might be in the Amplified. Might be in there, but not in the New King James. All right, pistachio. I love pistachios. Man, I... What? No, I would have said no. Yeah. And they are, no. you, you remember colors? We talked about colors earlier. Oh, verse They're so <laughs> You're find out vibrant. Oh, really? That's our feature verse for the day. <laughs> anyway, walnuts. Are walnuts in the Bible? That's old. I'm trees. Some thumbs of down, course. thumbs up, it maybe. Everybody a little confused? No. <laughs> no walnuts in the Bible. Oh, I miss those. Man, you started off really I well. Know, man. That's so cool. All right, yeah. here's our verse. I like this verse because it has two nuts in it. Genesis 43:11 out of the New King James and their father Israel said to them, "If it must be so, then do this: take some of the best fruits of the land no in your way. vessels, carry down a present for the man, a little balm, a little honey, spices, myrrh, pistachio nuts, and almonds." One verse. We've got the two nuts that most people Isn't wouldn't that even awesome? think were in it. Pistachio, though, I love do that. Think, I love that. That's New like King God James. explaining how provision I comes feel to like someone. Food God made is beautiful. Go perfect. It. Perfect. Pretty well, much. Why don't you tell me that you'd be fat if you just eat nuts all no, the time? Well, no. they are high in fat. You just, we just said be careful. Yeah. I'm not saying don't eat You can't eat have them. a giant, you know, bucket of almonds. Pastor James, if I eat a whole bag of nuts every day, you I will blow up. You don't even want to do that? I no. love nuts. No I one really you wants to eat. gorge on healthy food. I, you can't eat that I many nuts love anyway. Nuts. But yeah, they do. <laughs> the, I mean, they will. You'd be full. You'd be stuffed. Like Laura <laughs> said, she gets hungry. That's a great snack because it, it is filling. It carries you over right. to mealtime. You know what so time So there it you is? go. Is that in the Bible? I do know what time it is. It's time for us to do the devotional. Oh, man. If you have Pastor's devotional, go ahead and grab it. Open to today, well, Monday, October here's 17th. The, Pastor, you might want to be here. Okay. And then here's the other thing, too. If you on. don't have his wanna... devotional, get it. But then there's a women's devotional. I and know. I have both we of them. We got to do something and give that to all these people. I read both of them. It's coming out uh, November 6th. Right. 
It's beautiful. Women's devotional? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. And then you have No, a, wait, no, what am I talking about? Women's devotional is not your book. It's your, your prof- other your book. book. Your other oh, book is out. coming out. He's got a new book coming out, but we'll feature that in a couple of weeks. We'll Women's devotional is out. It's out, and it's beautiful. And if you're a woman, you should get it. Yes. All right, Monday, October 17th. Culture of wisdom. Here we go. Scripture is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 17. It says, I pray the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and spirit of revelation to know him through your dependency, a de- deepening intimacy with him. Ephesians 1, 17. Of course, that's the passion. Many people lack wisdom. The Bible says if we lack wisdom, we should ask for it. It's in James 1, 5. Let wisdom have its way in your heart. Wisdom is essential. Wisdom's the GPS of life. It's the voice telling you where to turn, what to do, what not to do. We must have a desire for wisdom. It's also important that we have people around who exceed us in wisdom so we can tap into that. We tend to make our relationships with God so personal, it's almost arrogant. We say things like, it's my personal journey, or we cling to our independence. Truthfully, we just don't want to be subjected to anybody else. But if we honestly want to grow in wisdom, we would do well to find a mentor who's wiser than we are. Proverbs 13.10 says, wisdom opens your heart to receive wise counsel. So if you lack wisdom, ask God for it, and then go get yourself a mentor. Wow. Culture of wisdom. I love this today. I love it every day. It's a really good one. Yeah. But today is really good. I just think, you know, we've talked for years about like the recipes and not letting the recipes die with a prior generation. And there's something about, I was thinking about this morning, especially in North America, we're the only place that kind of discards our elderly. Mm-hmm. If you go to any other nation, mm-hmm. they revere the elderly, yeah. they honor them, they cherish them, they're like a prized possession. But here we're kind of like, oh man, you're kind of losing it. Mm. That's the opposite. We need to be people that value wisdom, Absolutely. especially godly wisdom in the people around you. Mm-hmm. I've noticed this falling off as I've pastored for the last 25 years where younger generation, they don't really want it. They want it on their terms. They don't want you to tell them what they don't want to hear. You know, and I, I don't think we were meant to live this life alone. I think right. you are meant to have mentors and godly people in your life to help you navigate. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with that. And I think the other part of it is that when you're a, in a church, there are people God has placed in that church that carry that godly wisdom. And they may be older. I could listen to someone elderly for ever right. yeah. if they if if you hear them pray and you hear the that they know the lord they have a relationship with the lord then they have something to share that you may not have gone through that you absolutely can gain wisdom on but i think it's important i loved there's so many nuggets in this one yeah. making sure that you have a mentor having somebody speak into your life or having a sounding board or a mentor that you can go, hey, what about this? I know mm-hmm. I've done that with you several times where I was like, oh, I had a dream about this or the Lord said this. And then you, you know, you have to have that. Right. You have to be accountable. Mm-hmm. And I think it's important to be able to have somebody that speaks into your life. But not only that, someone that you want to attain a closer relationship with the Lord, somebody that causes you to grow stronger and that you really want to present to other people what you grow from all those years. I think it's so important. There's just so many and so many things in this I could just go. Yeah, well, a lot of times in life when, when you come up against something, it can blind you. It can put blinders mm-hmm. on you, mm-hmm. whether it be, you know, sickness. I mean, I've been, I know we've been, I've been sick in the past where I felt so bad. I couldn't even pray. You know, you feel so bad. You can't even hardly pray. So, you know, thank goodness That's for like wisdom. we're talking about somebody that has wisdom, something to pray for or something that you can seek that counsel on and say, Hey, I'm encountering this, you know, pastor, you've pastored so right. many couples or done this or done that, you know, can you, can you shed any light onto this or give me some wisdom on this situation that I'm, I'm, I'm encountering right now. And like you say, the elderly, they've been through it. You know, teenagers end up growing up and thinking they know everything. And then as we grow older, you go, wow, I really didn't know anything back in my teen years. I thought I knew it all. And then I realized how smart my parents were. (laughs) You think your parents don't know anything at a certain age. And then you get older and go, wow, my parents really were on the ball and they did know what they were doing. Um, But when you get young, you think you're, you're invincible but you aren't, you're vulnerable and you need to seek that counsel. And everybody goes through traumatic seasons, yes. right? Yes. Right. Yes. And I remember, you know, I remember leaving, you know, this church that I thought was religious and I just was going out and doing my own thing and I did and God moved and it was so powerful. And then things started crashing, man. Mm. And I found myself in a really bad place by the time I was like 23 and I did all these great things. Wow. And that pastor came back in my life. 
Wow. And he said, I feel like you were, he told me, he said, I feel like you were driving a car so fast, got in a wreck, and you're getting up and you're like, I'm okay, I'm okay. And he's like, do you think trauma is speaking to you? Because wow. he said, I'm not in that car wow. wreck. But let me help you because wow. you wow. can't see clearly. Wow. And I noticed, yeah. wow. I was dealing with a person today, they're, they're, they, they have this girl in their life and they're not, you know, and I'm like, bro, there's flags. Mm -hmm. and, and instead of listening to my wisdom, he's going everywhere else to try to get approval for the relationship. And it's like, we can't do this, man. Mm -hmm. We see a side you don't see. Yeah. When you're going through trauma, you got to make sure your blind spots are covered That's by right. men and women that can mm -hmm. see it. So I'm grateful for the fathers in my life because they can go, like yesterday, I was talking to Pastor Mark and he said, it's going to work out. I've seen this happen mm -hmm. down the road. Don't worry, things are going to yeah. be okay. So awesome. we need it. So seek wisdom, seek wise, godly counsel, and you know, fellowship. Find a good church, find a good Bible study, find a good group to meet with and fellowship with them. That way you can bounce things off of each other and, and seek that wisdom from those that have been there and they've experienced it. Well, listen, thank you so much for joining us. We pray a blessed week over you and we use our scripture of 3 John 1, 2. Beloved, so I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. We love you guys, God bless you. Have love a great week, find a mentor. Mm -hmm. That is a good one. I love that. I just, I'm just, this one was just like.